Kia ora, welcome to New Zealand. It's Friday afternoon, it's a beautiful day, almost winter. Couldn't get a better day than this, this time of the year in Tauranga, New Zealand. My name is Stu Thompson and I'm going to talk to you about blood, mud, fire, water, speed, smash and build and other elements to engage the young people that are in your programs. So to be able to do that, we've got to know what the aim of our program is. So uh, sit down at the beginning of the year and work out what it is that your aim what your goals are, what you will want to achieve in the programs that you're running every week and set out a bit of a plan. Um, and so what drives you? Um, in Matthew chapter 19 verse 14, Jesus raised the importance of children when he said to the disciples who were trying to hush a whole, uh, hush a whole lot of children up and shoo them along, in other words get them moving out of their way, he said to them, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for such belongs, the, such belongs to the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus outlined the importance of children in the kingdom by saying that to the disciples. Another thing to consider what your aims are is the BB object. And I'm not sure whether um, you wonderful Scandinavian um, ministries uh, in, in Europe um, have the object as one of your overall aims, but certainly in, um, in the UK, in New Zealand, um, Australia and other parts of um, Southeast Asia, the object is very much important to us. And that is the advancement of the Kingdom of God and the promotion of habits of obedience, reverence, discipline, self-respect and all that tends towards true Christian manliness. So that's going to be one of our objectives in the programs that we're running here in New Zealand. I guess from there, once you know your aims, you've got to know what your objectives are. What are the what are the fingers that you're going to put in to achieve your overall objectives? And when you um, break it down, what are the tools that help us reach our goals? That's really what it comes down to. So first of all, you need to know what you're doing and you need to plan and you need to plan and plan and you've got to think ahead what you're actually going to do. And if you uh, tend to be like a little bit like me, uh, it's easy to run by the seat of your pants. That's a, a Kiwi New Zealand uh, euphemism for um, planning at the last minute and doing it on the fly. If you do that consistently, the young people know when you're actually on the ball or not and they will um, make it very hard for you. So uh, you're, you're your own worst enemy if you don't plan, if you don't know what you're doing, if you come along to say, oh, we'll just play games tonight. They don't want just games, they don't want just entertainment. They need really good programs implemented so they will continue wanting to come along and they'll continue uh, wanting to engage with what you've got. Another um, trap that we fall into as leaders is taking a long time between transitions in our program. So if you've um, got to focus on um, a Devo, say you're doing a Devo and the next thing you're doing is a game and you stop your Devo and then you spend five minutes um, working out your game and setting up your equipment, those five minutes you're going to lose your young people, especially your um, five to ten year olds, um, they'll end up in the toilets um, jamming toilet rolls down the loo and flushing it and then you're going to spend the rest of the evening trying to unblock your sewage system. Uh, you know that doesn't always happen but it has happened to me before and it did happen once when I wasn't well organised so that's something to really bear in mind. The second question is what do you do to focus on the young people and the object? So I guess um, when you're working out what you're actually going to do, it's about focusing on the young people that are in your care, those that you're running a program for. That's the next question. What are you going to do to keep them engaged? Well, I guess a big thing is passion and enthusiasm. Um, it's pretty hard to run a program that kids are, in, uh, are engaged in if you don't have a lot of enthusiasm. I guess uh, there's a scripture that comes to mind for me uh, for that one too, is this, what a, whatever you do, do it with all your heart. And so that's in um, Colossians 2 verse 23, and here's what it actually says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So time is something that um, young people need spent with them as well. Um, you've got your enthusiasm, you've got your passion, and you also need a bit of time to spend with them in order to build relationships, building trust, and um, with pure motives of doing them a great service and administering um, to them really well. Five to eight-year-olds, 
mate, they require a whole lot more concentration. Uh, often they're a bit like herding cats, uh, and that's a, another Kiwi euphemism for um, they're really hard to manage. And so if you're not really well focused, and if you're not um, really well organised and planning ahead, then you'll get caught out by these kids because they'll run, your, run right around you. Knowing your audience is important. Uh, eight to tens need less energy, but still a whole lot more engagement and a lot of planning required there. Lots of variation, lots of new experiences are, are really good. In fact, the, the fewer times in a year that you repeat the experiences for them in programs, the better it is because they're, they've just discovered that there's um, more in the world other than me and mum. 11 to 13 year olds, um, still a reasonable amount of action. Games, games, they still are very important to them. Uh, the rougher they are, the better they are for them. Um, but I think from once they're 13 years old and onwards to 18, say, um, you can play very little amount of games and but you're focusing on actually equipping them for adulthood and so I think uh, if you're working with say 14 to 18 year olds um, with those with that age group that I work with currently here in New Zealand I do very little game time with them and it's all equipping them for their adulthood we do uh, bible studies we do um, training for outdoor adventures so in New Zealand we're an outdoor society an outdoor community we do a lot of um, tramping, a lot of hiking in the in the woods, and we call it the bush. Uh, and so, if you can um, provide those programs for them, there's a lot of prep to be done on your BB night, um, and then in the weekends or afternoon somewhere, you, you take them out and do the action stuff. So you've got to know your audience, all right? Knowing the young people that you have in your um, in your company, your unit, in your group, uh, then you can actually meet their needs. Now, if you think, oh, yeah, these, I'm, I'm into, um, you know, I'm a hairdresser, I'm into cutting my hair, I'm not a hairdresser, but, you know, let's say, um, let's say I was, oh, I, I think these kids are going to be into cutting hair, so I'm going to teach them how to, um, you know, cut hair. But if they're not into that, you don't, you know, if you don't really know them and you haven't discovered what it is that they're really into, then hairdressing might be a complete waste of time. However, if you know them and you think, yeah, they're going to love this, and you teach them basics and then they end up cutting your hair, yeah, good luck with that, um, then um, they might really dig it. So I guess once you know your um, the young people that are in your care, then um, use that as an opportunity to uh, focus in on what they're into and develop your program around that as well. The next suggestion I've got is that you explore your creativity. Um, I know I'm reading my, uh, my notes here. You can see I've got, I'm looking over here, looking at my computer, seeing what I've got on my list of stuff that I want to tell. But don't do that with your kids. Make sure you know what you're going to be talking about, the activities that you're going to do before you do it, and have it all set up so that you don't have to read a piece of paper or read off your computer. And so creativity is something that comes from within you. So don't try and adopt somebody else's creativity when you're developing your program. Come up with your own ideas because they're the ones that you'll be able to do without having to, uh, to read from notes. Something that you've invented yourself, uh, you will be able to pass that on from your heart rather than your head or from a bunch of notes. Um, in New Zealand, again, as I say, outdoors is very important. We have annual um, Mud Wars competition, so all the companies and all the units get together in a city um, like here in Tauranga, and we go down to uh, a tidal area and we play in the mud. And we do uh, three or four sets of competitions. And we've been doing this particular event, the Icon Sand Wars, uh, since 2006. So um, we have a trophy and uh, that's handed out to the winners every year. Um, and, and we have camps, annual camps, um, near the river or near the beach. And those camps have always got a theme, whether they're a commando camp or they're a rodeo camp. They might be a fear factor camp. Those camps, if you've got a theme, then you're going to flick on the imagination of those kids that you have in your care. All right, And that's going to be an engagement bonanza. Uh, yeah, what is a bonanza? No, let's not go there. Uh, that's going to be an engagement plus, plus, plus. When they uh, see you with a program that you're doing uh, that's got a theme, they'll dress up with it, they'll engage in it, and they'll really get excited with it. 
we have campfire nights in New Zealand and uh, if you've got a, a nine kilo, kilogram uh, butane um, gas bottle, um, you can get a gas service provider to take the valves out of it, fill it up with water and remove the gas out of it with that water and then you can weld some um, a tripod of legs, so three legs on the bottom and you've just made yourself a beautiful uh, barbecue brazier and you can um, cut up pallets, forklift pallets make really good firewood and um, wherever you are in the city, if you're in the middle of London, in the middle of Copenhagen, um, if, if the, uh, the uh, local bylaws uh, prevent you, then you obviously won't be able to do it. Okay, something else that you can do with creativity is build stuff. So if you are um, a little bit of a dab hand at um, doing home maintenance, we call it DIY, do it yourself in New Zealand. Uh, there's a really a whole lot of stuff that you can do in making things with wood using hand tools. Um, try not to give the kids um, power tools to use because there are a whole lot of hazards with that. But hand saws, hammers, um, drills, battery drills are safe enough to use with young children. You know, I think probably seven or eight year olds are okay. You can teach them how to use them, but make sure you teach them. And you can use uh, those tools to make anything. Um, Pinewood race cars are something that the scouts in America build. Um, ours here in New Zealand are a whole lot more rudimentary than the ones that they use in the US. Um, and so we get a, a small piece of wood shaped like a wedge um, and we turn it into a little car and we cut out some wheels with a, a hole saw with a drill on it and it cuts a 30 millimeter wheel or the hole in the middle and you can screw that on the sides and there are so many things. We build rat traps because we have um, rats in New Zealand that uh, kill our native birds. Uh, young people from 5 to 13, in fact any age group, even us as adults, if you engage them in competition, so if you're going to do an activity, make it into a competition and you will engage them every time and kids will do anything if it's just for a small lolly. They will do anything to beat their mates and to, uh, to win that game. So if you add in competition, um, then it becomes more fun. Uh, if you've got a theme, you're going to engage the imagination, add a competition onto that theme, and then you've engaged them even more. Adventure. Well, what child have you ever worked with that doesn't really like adventure? Our aim here in New Zealand, and we have a lot of kids that um, spend a lot of time on the couch, uh, playing video games, watching videos. We're not really into uh, them doing that, so we're trying to actually uh, do more activities that are out and about. So get them off the couch, get them outside, get them climbing trees and uh, running and jumping and, and doing all those sorts of things. Swimming uh, where it's safe um, and you've got the right ratios. Risk management is a big issue with uh, some of those adventure things, but um, sign your 14 to 18 or 24 year olds up to the Duke of Edinburgh's award program that's available in, uh, everywhere in the world that you will be, I'm sure. Duke of Edinburgh uh, Award is, um, has, has four elements to it. There's skills, there's physical, there's adventure, and there's service. Um, and so where you've, um, you know, you're those 14 to 18 year olds, they need to start looking out and about beyond themselves to, um, I suppose, discover the world and to serve others. And when young people serve others, and they see the direct benefit to those people that they're serving, you will get them doing that ahead of anything that's really fun. And I'll tell you a bit more about that shortly. We've got a, um, a local rescue helicopter is coming on, and so um, hopefully you'll still be able to hear me over and above the, the chopper in a moment. But yeah, if, if you are engaging kids in a service project, they have to see the person that is benefiting the service. Okay. So sign your kids up for the D of E. Um, climb trees, as I say. Uh, make sure you do your risk management for all of those activities. If you can't swim in the Thames, then maybe you could catch rats. Just kidding. Um, so we spend a lot of time swimming in the summer, um, and uh, the water's you know warm and clear. Uh, if you can do that near you, do that. And again, risk management is a is an important one there. Ratios are important, so find out what your local unit or your local church's policy is for that and make sure that you follow it. 
if you can't climb trees, then climb up the stairs in a, in a tall building, have a competition out of it. Um, and you know, I can see the gherkin, the, the, uh, the shard, if you're in London, then go race up those stairs in those buildings. And if you're not allowed to do that, we'll find an outdoor stairs somewhere. Um, up, you know, there's plenty of memorials around London where you can um, climb up uh, the stairs. I wouldn't say you climb the, the statue, uh, that might be a little bit insensitive. <laughs> but uh, find a place where you can run and run a competition with the kids if you can't do some of these adventure things. Turn everyday things into an adventure, that's really what I'm trying to say. Um, I have seen slug guns or air rifles used in a church hall and it can be done safely uh, and so if you have slug guns or air rifles and you only use them uh, in the summer on your summer camps, have a think about how you could be able to use um, those on your um, on your weekly night because it can be done in fact there's not too many things that you do on camp that can't be done in the middle of the week program so have a crack at that responsibility um, I have found young people from the age of 10 need to be given responsibility on a very regular basis it doesn't have to be a major responsibility but the more often you can give them uh, any any leadership role the better it will be for them and I suppose if you don't give a young person responsibilities that'll be a little bit like them playing on a football team but they sit on the bench for the whole game and no one gives them play time uh, and so once you get uh, these kids used to responsibility build on it and build on it and um, I suppose that's the most difficult challenge for a lot of us because it means that you have to delegate and delegating jobs can be yeah, it involves a lot of time, it involves a lot of thought, and sometimes that's a little bit of a challenge to provide too. But if you can, give them as much responsibility as you can. All right, folks, so just to recap all of the points that I've made here, um, to run an engaging program, if it's all about blood, mud, fire, water, speed, smash and build, add in fun, add in faith to that, and you've got a program that will keep boys humming, and girls for that matter, uh, all night, all week, and, and you'll never have a pause in your program. So first of all, think of why you're here. Focus on the children and the young people in your group. Consider the object. Know the needs and interests of your audience. Okay. Plan ahead, term by term, year by year. Keep your transition times and periods as short as possible. Run your programs with passion and enthusiasm. Use creativity and engage their imaginations. Where possible, build simple wood construction objects. And if you can't do it yourself, get someone else to do it for you. There will always be someone in your community who knows how to do that stuff and they're only just, they're very happy and willing to, to share that responsibility with you. Provide them with adventure. Get the fire, get the water out and have some, have some fun with that. Uh, you know, good clean fun. Um, yeah, that's important. Have lots of fun, lots of games. Um, and as the age um, increases, the number of games that you need to play probably decreases. That's certainly what i found. But spend time with these young ones. The older they get, the more time you need to spend. So weekends away, tramping, and, and, and always in safety, groups of more than, uh, more than one adult, so no fewer than two adults on your group for, for safety reasons. Um, make everything a competition and then you will engage them. And lastly, give your young ones increasing, increasing amount of responsibility from age 10 onwards. And really, that's my advice for you. Thank you for listening, and all the very best for the rest of your course. Thank you.